Live from Las Vegas, Nevada, it's The Cube at IBM Interconnect 2015. Brought to you by headline sponsor, IBM. Okay, welcome back everyone. You are watching theCUBE live in Las Vegas at IBM Interconnect. It's a special presentation of our show, theCUBE, which we go out to the events and extract the signal noise. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconANGLE, and I'm excited to have two awesome guests here. Nigel Hook, CEO of Silver Hook, and Ian Taylor, CEO of Animation Research and Virtual Eye, um, who are using data and technology in an application that is so awesome and cool, boat racing on oceans and on lakes. So we're going to have a great conversation around how you guys are harnessing technology into the racing and the technology, and obviously it's the objective and the outcome is very simple, win the race. There's no like, there's no like, other, anything else that matters, right? So, welcome to theCUBE. Thank, Thank you. you, Thank you, and actually it's winning the race and having as many people as possible see it. And that's been the struggle of our sport, racing on the ocean, it's very difficult to see what's happening. And this technology is transforming that, as, as Ian did with America's Cup, to bring that experience into the home of the fan. So, um, talk about Ian with the technology, we'll get into some of the conversation, but you know, set the context, it's been well documented that this is a competitive advantage. We've seen it on the, on the, on the car circuits, whether it's NASCAR or Formula One, it's no, no brainer. This is an input into design, execution, and ultimately the outcome. So, that's clear, it's hard to do. So, I want you to illuminate some insights around what goes on and how hard it is, and what, how does it render itself for, for the application of the users? The users aren't geeks, they're just, their application is to race, they're geeky, yeah. crew chief, they're using data, so yeah, explain I, all this. So I think the, the, the premise we work on is our job is to turn digital data into pictures that people can understand. You mentioned Formula One, we cover Formula One, we do all those sorts of things, but there's nothing quite as difficult as chasing what Nigel's doing, a boat that's doing 150, 180 miles an hour out on the ocean in 10 foot waves. So we're actually, when we started the America's Cup, we got two bits of data from the boat. That was 1992. Now, we're getting 2,000 bits of data a second from Nigel, from, he's actually wearing this little bra and stuff on there with the hard drives. <laughs> so turning those into pictures is what the challenge so is. So the, the old days, was it a serial cable, monochrome yep. monitor? Yeah, it was, a, it was a pigeon. You need to yeah. tie the signal on and fly the pigeon out. <laughs> so give us some of the insight. Obviously, the race has got high speed, 150 miles an hour on the ocean ways. You guys doing lake racing as well as around lakes too, as an ocean? We well, you know the big lakes like Lake Michigan can get just as rough as the ocean sometimes. So it's um, it's generally we try to find racetracks where there's going to be some big water because that's what separates our boats from, say, the hydroplanes which people see. So I got to ask you in the big data world, because since it came up uh, yesterday, what's a better metaphor for the future of big data? Data lakes or data oceans? It's a progression, you know. Data lake is, is, a, is a current phase. Data ocean is really going to subscribe all the data that's out there, right? And being able to amass that into one meaningful uh, set and, of relevant data. And I think, you know, the meaningful thing here is a tidal wave. You know, we are seeing a tidal wave of data. And the great thing that's happening here with the um, Bluemix stuff that we're working with, uh, with IBM, we're actually able to fire that tidal wave up into there. It sorts out the data and gives us only the bits we need to know, and that's important. So the notion of a rogue wave is in the big data world is what? <laughs> well, you know, I think the really cool thing is when these rogue wave hits, we hand it over to IBM to sort the rogue wave out, <laughs> calm it down, send it back so we can actually use it. Actually, Watson will actually tell you a rogue wave because it's coming navigate the yeah. other way. Well, so. That's right, well, that, that's, that's the big deal with this. So Nigel's sitting in his boat. There's just Nigel and his, and his um, wheel man. Meanwhile, back on shore, we're taking all of the data from the boat and delivering it to a crew. So there's kind of like eight people in this boat, even though there's only nine, there's eight people and Watson up there helping. All right, so let's break this down. This is such a cool topic. So just take us through some of the mechanics. You're driving the boat 150 miles an hour. You got potentially 10 foot waves in, a, in an ocean. You got a data ocean coming in, all these data points coming into the, into the command center. Your technology is gathering it. Watson's involved. But you're driving the boat. You don't have time to look at the screen. It's like looking at your phone while driving. You can't text while driving. You can't <laughs> navigate a boat doing 150 miles an hour, so who does it? You have a crew of people, explain that whole yeah, process. Yeah, no, that's a great question actually, because what all this data that comes out, there's only a certain amount which is relevant. And what the IBM SPSS Analytics does is sift through all of that data looking for patterns of what could predict an unwelcome outcome, like an engine which is going out of tune, or a, a, rudder, a propeller which is vibrating too much. So that information out of all that data will be sent to me and if I can't see it, which is most likely the case because we're bouncing around, it's also going out to our team, to our crew chief, and he sells, sells me on the radio to tell me that, hey, you've got a battery that's losing power, 
and, and you need to switch to the other uh, charging systems. And that, I could never figure that out during a race. Something yeah. like that actually happened in the World Championships in Key West. And we were 30% of a race left to go, and we would have definitely not finished. And being able to have that information, to me, in the cockpit, enabled us to finish the race, and we finished strong. And you make tactical through. adjustments on the fly, just another condition of the race, based on the data that you would have been blindsided. Actually had to switch systems while we're running the boat. So which was an easy thing, and I wouldn't have done that if I'd not gotten the certainty that that's the issue, because I could have thought maybe it was, but with this data, they got the certainty that this is a problem and this is a solution. Yeah, that's phenomenal. It's just a real world application. It's in every vertical. I mean, oil and oil rigs out in the ocean don't have T1, DS3s, and all the high-peak connectivity use the cloud. So, so how does all this come together? You're on a boat. It's not like you're an internet of thing in terms of the computer's concern. So how does all this come together, and what is IBM's role in all this? I, IBM's role is absolutely critical because while we're collecting all that data, it's just too much for us to process. So it's going up. I like to say it's going to Watson. He's sitting at his desk up there in that <laughs> mysterious thing called the cloud. He's going, this is relevant, that's not, that's not. 2,000 bits a second and he's going, this is important, send it back. Our job is then to turn it into a visualization system so his support crew can see it and warn him. You know, th th there is another thing. I, I like to refer to this. N Nigel's the CEO of his boat. He's sitting in his office and it's just like a business. There's this tidal wave of information coming at your business every day. You need somebody analyzing that so you only get the bits that actually you need to do something about, not this kind of... Okay. And, and how we got here was, I got two offices. One office is with a company called DataSkill, which is a long-term IBM partner that focuses on intelligent systems and then I have the other office, which is in the race boat. We're two converged, and it was through a relationship with IBM's JSTART team that uh, we started contemplating how to make use of all this data. And it was through the BlueMix platform, we were able to very quickly, in, it, with a cloud infrastructure, be able to develop this, bring Ian in with Virtualize to animate the, the data, and then with people like in uh, Dunedin, the South Island of New Zealand, we're in California, the JSTART team's on the East Coast, working together very quickly. In fact, how long do you think it Three took weeks. you in? Three weeks, and I think that's the power of the Internet of Things. You know, that's what we're talking about, but this is it happening practically. So talk about the instrumentation piece, because this is fascinating. So what's instrumented, what's not instrumented, where's the data coming from? Obviously, is there external data? Obviously, you have weather, you have data, seas. What's kind of data you collect, and what's going on in real time, and how do you instrument all this? <laughs> I'll talk about the boat, and Ian can talk about the environment, because that's very sim applicable to America's Cup, where it's a lot of experience. But in the boat, we're now taking sensors of, heat sensors of different types of mechanical functions of the boat, like the gearboxes, like in the engine itself. We've got pressure sensors for fuel pressure, for all the different types of pressure systems, water pressure. We have GPS signals, we have accelerometers, we have load sensors on the boat. And now what we've added this year, the difference between uh, last year and 2015, is we've got the biometrics. There's actually two people in our cockpit. I'm the throttle man, I have a driver. And so we both got a full-time job in the cockpit of a boat. We're both wearing these harnesses, it's underneath the shirt here. It's an equivital piece which yeah. monitors all the different uh, aspects of the human body. All this has been transmitted to Ian. So, how do, so you guys have to have cadence, you guys have worked together, it's total teamwork. One falls down, the other one's down too. So like, how do you guys throttle, how does the throttle man work with the driver? And what does the heart rate matter? It's like, oh, he's going to have a heart attack, get a sub in, he's fatigued, I mean, is that basic thing? Or it, it is, it's a very unique our sport actually, because it, I don't think there's any other motorsport where one person's got the wheel, controls where you're going, and that's all we've got. The other person's determining how fast they go, and actually flying the boat. You've got the, 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 the roll capability, you've got, to, you've got to control and the pitch of the boat. So, so the throttle man's controlling the boat, how fast it goes, the driver's just telling where it's going to go. I mean, that's quite, and that's got to be harmonized at, at you know, speeds in excess of 140 miles an hour in rough seas. So that's, that's tricky as it is right there. And what we're doing is we're taking the, the health measurements of both the pilot and the co-pilot, the throttle man and the driver, and then combining that during the stressful one hour race. And there's different conditions of stress, like going into a corner, the driver may be more stressed on that because he's got the wheel than the throttle man. In the straightaways, going through the big waves, the throttle man maybe has more stress. But seeing how the two people respond to it, with the respiratory rate, heart rate, body temperature, that I think has a lot of significance. And where we see that actually progressing to is like into healthcare, because people are wearing wearables now, not just for athletes, but also in like triage and transition of patients in hospitals. So there's a lot of commercial uh, application so it's a of what we're doing issue. here. So I mean, you don't want to, you know, get fatigued because if you're running the throttle and you're stressed. 
I mean, you, so you guys just collecting the data? Are you, are you? I didn't get that. You're, are you using the data on the heart rate or not? We are. Yes. Okay. Yes. So because one of the one of the um, challenges we face is heat exhaustion yeah. and and performance degradation. You know, as your body gets hotter and and you get at, you know that, those sort of extreme conditions, your reflex is not quite as pristine, right? So so that can be monitored on these systems. As you in a boat, you don't know it. You're just racing to the check. So do you have a sub, like a backup, an understudy? So like when you're fatigued, and you might not even admit that you need to tap out. Well, you... I think the key is is to, as a race driver, you're under a lot of stress, but if you've got some feedback, but you're overstressed, I think you have the ability to get that's calm it self-governing, so it's yeah. more about it's internal feedback. It's like feedback. a biofeedback, yes. And that's really beneficial, because throughout the whole race, we want to see, we want to be at the lowest possible yeah. stress during that race, and this is kind of feedback which helps. But just putting that in context, I mean, you, you asked about that feedback. This stuff's going again, it's going up to the cloud, coming down, and on shore, the medical team, so you've got an engineering team, but the medical team are sitting there getting this data live yeah. from the from yeah, the It's crew. a safety issue too, it's also a self-improvement. Yes, it is, yeah, yeah. performance yeah. enhancement. All right, so let's get back to the tech. Now back to the instrumentation on the boat. Give us through how the tech under the hood, what's happening? You got instrumentation on the boat, it's going into the cloud. What is IBM doing? What's real time? Where's the data sets come from? Can you yeah. share? Yeah, so, it, so everything is real time. And as I said before, there's around about 2,000 bits of data every second, which we just can't handle. So the great, the, the, the great new development is Bluemix in the cloud. So the data is going up there, and it's sorting through all of this amount of data in real time and only sending us the bits we really need to know. So it's looking for patterns, it's looking for this, it's looking for that. So it's kind of predicting that you've got a problem with this engine starting now, do something about it, because in about 30 seconds time, it's going to blow up. Okay, so I got to ask you guys, because you have real practitioners, and it's a fun area people can relate to. Uh, we talked about data lake, data ocean, obviously they're not, gonna, they're not mutually exclusive. One's batch slower, one's more dynamic, more stronger and different, unpredictable. Um, but in the big data world, what do you guys see as the next step, the next wave of innovation that's coming, so to speak, uh, pun intended, uh, for, <laughs> for, for um, big data? I mean, is there an extensibility to it? Where do you guys see this going from your standpoint, knowing what you're do doing now? Connect the dots forward. It, I was going to say, if I could I mean, answer this almost for you, Ian. Ian's technology with Virtualize is incredible, because they take this data and they animate it, and it looks just real. I mean, to see the, his animation compared to the real video, the TV, there, there's actually less and less difference. So the ultimate goal for this, I think, from, from the visualization point of view, is to use like the virtual reality, because with, with the data, Ian can take that into a virtual world. And so people sitting on their, yeah. you know, in their home can actually be in the boat, sitting with me, as I turn my head, they will see what I see out the window. Yeah. They'll see my gauges, they'll see all of that. Yeah, I, I think th th that bigger question is the internet of things is yeah. the word things. And there are more and more things that are connecting to the internet. So your fridge, your watch, your heart rate. Your, and I think what we're seeing here, and it was a real eye opener for me because I didn't know about Bluemix. I mean, we come from a small agile company. <laughs> the last company I ever believed we'd ever be working with was IBM. You know, there was this monumental yeah. shift as they start to take this stuff and understand that it's about analyzing data. It's now no longer about big machines. All this happens on my iPhone. Yeah. So it's about this tidal wave of data and developing technologies that can sift through the stuff and give us the stuff that's important. You know, I love the new IBM because the new way that is their, is their slogan, but it's an old school company belt that's grounded in computing solutions. But they're modern now. They got the blue mix, they got the big data, the Watsons, not only winning Jeopardy, now they're winning races. So <laughs> that's, they're, they're, they're a cool company. I think they're very cool. I've been watching them for years uh, and decades, frankly, but like now, recently, they're on a, the right path. But the challenge outside the tech world is real world. And I think what you guys present is uh, an example of social business, right? Because boat racing is a lot like in the moment, yeah. real time. I mean, it's a race, you got hard race. If you make a bad turn, you're out of business. You could be, you'd be you could die, you could get hurt, and, and not finish where you want to finish. So the, out, the outcome is very important. But that's like real time, yeah. in the moment. People talking at the, on mobile phones, a CEO, you're the captain running the throttle, someone's navigating with the wheel, that's, a, that's an executive team. It is, it's a great metaphor because you're right, with the Internet of Things now, there's so much instrumented data coming in to people to make decisions, and there's just too much data. So, so this is where uh, the IBM has a technology with Watson to do the cognitive intelligence and SPSS for the analytics server, yeah. but what's really key is how do you get that development time to implement that down to a very compressed uh, number yeah. which is acceptable, right? And that's where Bluemix really comes in. 
by having a development environment where you can quickly develop these things, iterate them very fast, as we did here, that's really the, the accelerator is the differentiator. And that worked for you, the blue mix was working fine, yeah. everything's cool? I mean, three years ago, this would have taken three years to do, this time it took three weeks. Yeah, that's awesome, I mean, I think, I think the outcome based in the moment is the new application, whether it's people talking. See, most people, tech people think like, oh, systems of engagement, it's how to make someone, here's some persona data, maybe they can make a purchase or buy an ad or something. Your application is engaging the ocean, winning the race. Your outcome is very specific. That's like real world. It it's is, like yes. a business. It's a real it's, world. A user out there has got an objective, a customer's customer. <laughs> you want to, their object, their outcome is to win customers and keep, keep their customers. And you know, while other forms of motor racing like Formula One have been doing this before, the difference what we've proven with, with the IBM technology is to be able to do that in a very violent environment. When you're in the ocean, you've got rooster tails coming at you at 100 and something miles an hour, you've got big waves, salt water doesn't go with electronics, right? There's, there's a lot of complications there, yeah. and to be able to maintain that stream as we're firing the data up there to make sure what's coming back to us is not only relevant but accurate, yeah. that requires an enterprise level type it of software. It changes the game because now you have all the data post-race, post-mortem, you know, from health to boat status. <laughs> <laughs> okay, final question, we're getting the hook here. Um, Nigel uh, and Ian, share with us a quick sound bite on the most exciting thing that's happened to you guys with this new data solution out with relative to the racing. What's the, like the coolest thing that's happened? I'd say the coolest thing for me was um, in the uh, final race of the World Championships. Uh, it was a rough race, so our boat is a rough water boat. It was coming into its own, and we had three laps to go and we didn't know it, but we had a, a battery system going out, a charging system going out, and if we hadn't have gotten alert to the crew chief about that, we wouldn't have finished. And we would have had this great performance, but you know, would have come in, you know, wouldn't have finished the race. So having that alert, which got to me so I could switch those systems over, and we could finish strong, that was like, uh, it was like, could never have happened before. That's a good that was, return on investment. That was like, <laughs> well done, Blue Mix. <laughs> well done, Blue Mix. And the most exciting thing for me was this group of people working in, disparate places around the world. We hadn't even met each other. And there we, we turned this thing on. The most exciting thing for me was looking at it and going, oh my God, it works. Yeah, collaboration, meeting yeah. people. Hey, you love you online. Not great yeah. to meet you in person. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's guys, why these events are good. <laughs> guys, thanks for coming on theCUBE. Really appreciate it. This is theCUBE, extracting the city from the noise. Data Ocean, that's the future of big data. And these guys are racing in the ocean. And uh, we'll be right back to share more data with you. This is theCUBE. We'll be right back after this short break.